Sri Vishnu Sahasranama, name 957, is Pranava, a well-known word in Vedic culture, which signifies Omkar. It's also fairly common as a name. It's a name of Vishnu, obviously. Uh, a recent president of the Republic of India was named Pranab, the Bengali pronunciation, Pranab Mukherjee. So it's well known as a name, and generally it is associated with Omkar. That was the uh, understanding given by Parasha Bhatta when it appeared previously, this Pranav in Vishnu Sahasranam, in Shloka 44, also previously at name 410 in Parasha Bhatta's uh, recension, uh, Pranama, another part or another way of understanding this name is as Pranav. Here, Parasha Bhatta gives the meaning of the name as he who is praised or worshipped. So in this way, it's similar to uh, other names that have come previously, such as Stavya, he, uh, he who is worthy of being praised. And in this respect, we can take the whole Vishnu Sahasranama, everything points to his praise and worship, all the qualities of him described in this Vishnu Sahasranama. And the whole Vishnu Sahasranama is nothing but praise and worship of Vishnu. So this is one of the names taken, taken in that understanding that Pranav means he who is praised or worshipped. So in, in this way, this covers one of those names which covers every other name in Vishnu Sahasranama. And there are several of them, as I've discussed previously. Here, Parashara Bhatta again explains in terms of the Pranav Mantra, but he states, he makes the explication or the further understanding that by this sacred mantra, Pranav, Bhagavan, the Supreme Lord, reveals to his devotees the actual relationship between him and them and makes them understand the need for surrendering to him. In Vedic culture, for the twice-born, Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, and Vaishyas, regular daily chanting of Omkar, Pranav, is essential. It is understood in various ways, but the real or proper understanding is understanding that Omkar means Vishnu, or even going beyond that, Krishna, Pranava Sarva Vedeshu, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, in all the mantras of the Vedas, this mantra, Pranav, is uh, Krishna. Is <clears throat> this in all the Vedas, the Pranav is most important. Radha Krishna Shastri, in this regard, quotes from the Yoga Sutra, right from a very early sutra. Tasya Vachakaha Pranavaha. The Pranav mantra, which can be understood to mean, or is unpacked to understand, mean that this Pranav mantra, Omkar, is a manifestation in words of the ultimate truth, Paramatma, the Supreme Lord. So this mantra is meant for revealing him to us when we properly understand the meaning of the mantra. There are many, many commentaries on Brahma Gayatri, on Omkar, to try to explain what it is, but the proper meaning is to understand that this means Vishnu or more in depth of rasa.
Krishna, and if we even want to go a little further, then Radha Krishna. So we, we worship Vishnu by chanting Pranav Omka in Gayatri Mantra. And this chanting should, when coupled with the process of hearing and serving under a bona fide spiritual master, lead us more and more into the spirit of worshipping him and serving him. This Pranav, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recognized, I'm, I'm going over much of what was discussed previously, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recognized this Pranav as the Mahavakya, as the uh, major sound in all the Vedas, of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself gave more importance, especially in this Kali Yuga, to chanting of the holy names. Uh, pre just prior to this, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was telling the Mayavadis of Varanasi that unlike Shankaracharya's speculating about there being four Mahavakyas, actually it's Pranav, which is the Mahavakya in the Vedas, but just prior to saying this, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had said that Sarva Mantra Sarnama A Shastra Marma. The essence of all the Shastras is the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Rama Hare Hare. All commentators on Pranav not just in Vishnu Sasranam, but in many other fora also, in many other writings, agree that Pranav is the mantra or the, the one sacred syllable, which is the root of all the Vedas. All the Vedas come from Pranav. And then in this way it can be understood that it is the essence of all else that is in the Vedas. And it is a manifestation of Brahman in sound form. Everyone will agree with that. The Vaishnavas knowing Bhagavan to be the Param Brahma, as Arjuna said in Bhagavad Gita. They know Pranav as Bhagavan in sound form. Brahman, Bhagavan is called Pranav because all the Vedic mantras, all the Vedic wisdom, everything is to be known from the Vedas, Vaidesha Sarvaraham Eva Vedya Amen, for knowing him and for praising him, and Omkar itself, Pranav, is meant for praising him. Therefore, he is called Pranav, and it is he, ultimately, whether they know it or accept it or not, who is aimed at in this chanting of the Pranav Mantra by all sages, saintly persons, and all twice-born persons within Vedic culture. <clears throat> Pranav Omka is composed of three letters, A, U, Ma. And again, different commentators have explained these three letters and combined the understandings of these three letters in various ways according to their own understandings. <clears throat> uh, the Vaishnavas generally say that A ah indicates Bhagavan. He is the beginning of everything. Aksharanam Akarosmi, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, among all the letters and the letter A. Ah because he comes first, he's before everything. Ma relates to the jiva and uka. Relates to the jiva fully existing only for Bhagavan. This is one Vaishnava way of understanding. Uh, there are many others also. We have from Shastra, Akaras cha pyukaras cha makaras cha tataparam veda triatnakam protam pranavam brahmana. 
padam akareno chate vishnu shrir ukarena chote makaras tvanayo dasa pancha vingsha prakirtitaha this is from Padma Purana, quoted by Srila Jiva Goswami in his Bhakti Sandarbha, that pranav, or the syllable om, which is the word denoting Brahman, is the very embodiment of all the three Vedas, the three letters that make it up, a u ma, indicate Vishnu, he's the very form of a, and U denotes Shri. That's what Padma Purana says. Shri is often understood to mean Lakshmi. That is accepted by Gauriyas also, but even more so, they see Shri as Radha. And the letter M, according to what we're discussing in Padma Purana, or the authoritative statement of Padma Purana, is the servant. He who is the servant, the 25th element in the Vaishnava Sankhya system. So different acharyas in their different sampradayas have unpacked the meaning of this mystic mantra. And generally, these meanings are taught to the guru at the time of imparting this mantra to the disciple. It is a secret mantra, even though it's not secret in one way. Uh, the, the Gayatri mantra is very well known, Om Bho Bhuva Swatat Savitur, and so on, the Brahma Gayatri mantra. But it is to be given by a guru who gives the spiritual potency that comes through the parampara, and explains the meaning for the disciples. And they say, well, Prabhupada gave it. Prabhupada personally gave Gayatri Mantra to me. He didn't personally explain it, but then he gave his books, which explains everything that's to be known about the Vedic knowledge, which is all expanded from Omka. So the basic point to understand is that the Omka, and the Brahma Gayatri Mantra is to remind us, the jivas, of the eternal, inseparate, inseparable, unbreakable relationship of the jiva to the Supreme Lord who is always to be served by the jiva. Shankaracharya interprets the current instance of this name as a reference to Bhagavan through the sound of the syllable Om. Since Bhagavan is this word or syllable, it's a word, it's, it's a monosyllabic mantra, monosyllabic word, which is not different from Bhagavan. So he is this Bhagavan is Om Pranav, and Pranav is Bhagavan. Nevertheless, as Srila Prabhupada uh, explained, the Vaishnavas tend to prefer to chant Pranav, Om, uh, in the form of the name, which is very personal. Pranav is not impersonal, but it's more an indication of his qualities or an indication of him being the supreme. Whereas names, uh, especially the Gorya Vaishnavas, they prefer names like Krishna, Madhava, Hari, Govinda, Gopinath. They, the names are preferred and Again, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave more importance to the holy name. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kivalam, Kalau, Nastreva, 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 Gati Ranyata. Even without chanting Pranav, we can get all full benefit of all Vedic processes 
simply by chanting the holy names. In the previous instance of the name, Sri Shankara gave the interpretation, he who is praised, which is being given here by Parashara Bhatta, so the giving similar meanings. Uh, they're giving, both of them give two meanings. Uh, one is, of Pranav means the Omka and, the, and he who is praised, but they give it in different uh, occurrences of the name. Satya Sanda Tirtha of the Madhva Sampradaya gives the meaning uh, Prakashena Nayati Iti Pranavaha. He who regulates, leads, or put the world in order in a super way. It's an unimaginably wonderful way. He is Pranav. That's one way to understand it. Another meaning, Nitya Nutanatvat Pranava. Prakeshena Nutanatvat Pranava. So it means he is always new, his glory is ever fresh, uh, his, everything about him is always fresh and new. Another commentator, Raghavendran, Sri Raghavendran gives other meanings. He is called Vishnu, is called Pranav because all the Vedas bow to him. Regarding Omka, we have in Kathopanishad, Etad Devaksharam Brahma, Etad Evaksharam Param, Etad Devaksharam Gyatva, Yoyad Ichati Tasyatat. That or syllable, Om, or this very syllable, Om, is Brahman. This syllable is supreme. Anyone who knows this syllable gets what he wants. That, Kartopanishad continues, that letter, this Omka, is the highest resort. Etad alambanam shreshtam. Etad alambanam param. Etad alambanam gyatva brahma loka mahiyate. This, this omka, this letter, is the highest resort, the supreme refuge, and by knowing this, one is glorified in the spiritual world, the world of Brahma. And Satyadeva Vashishta, having quoted from Kartopanishad in this way, quotes several other usages of the Omkar from the uh, Shruti, from the Upanishads and other sources. There's so many uh, references in Shruti to Omkar. He quotes Chandogya Upanishad. Om yet etad aksharam udgitam upasita, which means that one should worship with the hymns of the Samaveda that aksharam. The word aksharam itself has so many meanings the inexhaustible Lord. Uh, with this om, with this mantra, one should worship him with the hymns of the Samaveda. Uh, other references, so many, uh, given by Satyadeva Vashishta. The significance of the Pranav Mantra, then, is to be understood, is as a meditation on the mantra with its meaning in mind, which leads us to our permanent and eternal relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the spiritual world. Now, this Omkar chanting is in Vedic culture 
restricted only to certain people. One is required to be a highly cultured, highly uh, educated, uh, or one has to become highly educated by chant chanting. Uh, it is for the Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, males who are initiated into this. However, Acharyas commentating on Ramayana have shown how Ramayana, in a subtle, hidden way, introduces Omka to everyone and makes it available. Everyone is open to hear Ramayana. In Vedic culture, it's meant for everyone. There's no bar, there's no restriction, as there is in chanting Gayatri mantras or Omkar. So the Acharyas explain that there is a verse in the Ramayan which has words beginning with a u ma while describing that Lord Ram, Rama went out followed by S Sita and Lakshmana. And then <clears throat> it's also explained that this Savitri Gayatri is explained in Ramayana since every thousandth verse starting from the very first verse of Ramayana in Balakanda, produces the tat sa vi tu syllables of Brahma Gayatri. In this way, explain that the, Gay the Brahma Gayatri mantra is contained within Sri Ramayana, along with the originator of the Brahma Gayatri, Vishwamitra, that's another whole history, and Lord Rama himself. That means that the essence or the benefits of reciting the Vedic mantras, including Brahma Gayatri, become available for those who recite or hear Valmiki Ramayana. Similarly, the very first verse of Namalva in the Divya Prabandhams and the first three verses of Amaladhi Piran, the composition of Tirupan Alva contain the Om syllables. Ah. So this Om is available to all to pronounce, but in a particular way, depending upon the person's eligibility. And in this way, Vedic culture opens up Omka to everyone in various ways. But of course, chanting the names of Krishna is open to all. Uh, other meanings of the name Pranava. He is the dynamic force behind the state of waking and sleeping and dreaming. He is that force who uh, regulates all of this. Uh, another meaning, the liberated souls in the spiritual world are called prana, which means they are experiencing their innate eternal bliss with Krishna, that highest bliss. Vishnu is their guide and controller, and therefore he is known as pranav. Another meaning, and again, you have to unsort and unpack out the Sanskrit to see how this is understood. One has to know Sanskrit grammar very well to understand exactly how this works for many, or for all of the meanings of all of the words in Vishnu Sahasranam given by the commentators. Then another meaning of Pranav is that he is the bestower of full happiness and the highest strength, which means, of course, in Krishna consciousness. Now, to understand the meaning that Baladev Vidya Bhushan, in his commentary, 
gives to the name Pranav, then we have to look back at the previous name, Pranada, and see how Baladev explained that, that he gives himself, who is the Prana, the cause of subsistence to everyone, but he gives himself Pranada, particularly to the gopis. Therefore, Pranav, Baladev Vidya says, he is praised for being enriched with such an exalted manner of love. Pranav Bhagavan Ki Jai, Sri Vishnu Sahasranama Ki Jai.